This is a demonstration for beginners on how to solve JavaScript function problems. So the typical exercises for learning functions are often very short. The reason you do these exercises, and it's good to do a lot of them, is to build up muscle memory. And the muscle in this case is your brain. So getting used to writing functions will help you solve harder code problems in the future. So here's our first JavaScript function problem. We're going to write a function that searches in a string for a shorter string. The function takes two arguments, a string and the shorter string, the one we're going to search for. The function returns true or false. So those three instructions, that is a typical JavaScript function problem. And it's up to you to solve it based on just those three instructions. So that's what I want to walk through because sometimes for a beginner, when you read it, you just don't really know how to start. So I'm going to flip over to Replit to write this code because it's going to be a little more graceful. And first I'm going to paste in our instructions for this basic function problem. And they're in a multi-line JavaScript comment. And the first thing you want to do, since you're new at this, is you know the scaffold of a function. You know the basic outline of a function. So you can start with that, right? You know that you're going to start with the keyword function, and then you're going to have a name for your function. You must have parentheses, and you're going to have a pair of curly braces. And we've seen that there's more than one way to write this first line of a function, but they're basically all going to do the same thing. And what we put in the curly braces to solve the problem, that will be the same no matter how we start this function. I'm going to name my function find string because that's a practical name. That is what I want the function to do. So this is a good way to name functions. Think about the work that it's going to do and give it a name that tells you what that work is. Next, we need two parameters. The instructions say that this function takes two arguments, so that means we've got to have two parameters in the parentheses. We can use abstract variable names like a and b. And keep in mind that a will be the longer string and b will be the shorter string. Now, if we search for a string method, that searches for a string inside another string, will find includes, and I'm at MDN here. So we know that we're going to use that inside this function. So let's put it in there, and we'll leave lots of space around it because we're still building our function. Then we need to look at the problem instructions again and consider the purpose or the outcome of this function. So instruction three says the function returns true or false. We need to make sure the function does that. So as a beginner thinking, well, I have to figure out when is it true, when is it false, you might come up with this solution. And that's okay. Test it and see. Oh, wait. How do we test a function? Well, we need to call the function with two values as arguments. And those two values must be a string and a shorter string in that order. So we can try these in the console. OK, that works. The first returns false, and the second returns true. So good job. Now, is it possible to improve this function? Think about what would be returned if we simply put this into the console. It would return true. So our function could actually be a lot shorter. The fact is, I could actually take out all of this if stuff that I put in although beginners will often feel more comfortable with that. 
But because this statement itself is going to return either true or false, all I need to do is write this, and that can be my entire function. So let's test it with uh, applesauce and pear. That returns false. And let's test it with pear and apricot tart. Once again, searching for the string pear. And I run. And just like last time, it returns true. So we actually could write the function in a much more efficient and shorter way than you may have thought the first time you tried it. So you might ask yourself, why you would ever write a function that's so short and so basic? The answer is practice. Figuring out how to make it shorter is in itself a valuable learning experience. And the more you write these little functions, the more different little function problems you solve, the better you're going to get and the more comfortable you'll be writing functions of any length or of any complexity. So I'm going to show you a more complex function in the next video, and it's going to use this function. So it's like step two in your function learning process.